Hello, everybody, and welcome to another NCBI Labs live event. And uh, today we have quite a show lined up for you, and we are going to talk all about uh, screen readers. So, so what's coming up then? We are going to look at two of the titans of screen readers that we are all familiar with, the NVDA and the JAWS. First of all, we're going to have an overview of the NVDA with uh, Seamus Brett, who will give a presentation. And also we're going to have a look at using NVDA with the Outlook email program. Then Sean Dorn has a handy tip on the NVDA's rate boost, and we'll open it up to some questions and answers about the NVDA platform. Following on in part two, we'll be looking at JAWS and we'll have an introduction to JAWS by Brian Manning, who's in studio today. We will also have a look at the JAWS search command and JAWS OCR functions. And following that, we'll also take questions and answers on the JAWS platform. So we look forward to discussing all of that with our technology partners here in Sean Dorn, JP Corpin, Brian Manning, Joe Lonergan, and myself, Daniel Dunn, who's standing in for Jude Maher, who's on a well-deserved day off. So if you have any questions or comments throughout the show, don't forget you can email labs at ncbi.ie. Alternatively, you can use the questions and answers panel on the right-hand side of your screen. And while we are here today, we do encourage people to donate to NCBI. and uh, We have a new website platform set up called donate.ncbi.ie. And if you are interested in sponsoring one of our live events, please do get in touch. Send us an email to labs at ncbi.ie. So first of all, our apps in focus. Seamus Brett has made a presentation uh, taking an overview look at the NVDA screen reader. So over to Seamus. So we'll just take a moment while we line that one up. The screen reader for Microsoft Windows is a fully functional screen reader that can be used to read the contents of your laptop or desktop screen. You can download NVDA to your PC or laptop by simply searching for it in your browser and clicking on the link to download it and then following the installation steps. A donation is requested but is not essential. So NVDA as a screen reader is an essential um, tool for students who are blind or who need speech all of the time. But NVDA can also be very beneficial for students who have low vision, particularly students who may experience eye strain or visual fatigue when working with screens for a long period. And such students can usually switch from visual to auditory input by just pressing a, the keyboard, the keystroke, Control Alt N to turn on NVDA. So I'll just press that now, Control Alt N. Welcome to NVDA. And that it brings up the NVDA program with the NVDA welcome screen. I can now press the escape key to hide the welcome screen. Desktop list, OBS Studio 17 of 8. OK, so NVDA is very useful because it will read every element um, underneath the mouse pointer. So if I use my, move my mouse pointer Desktop. around different elements. Google Chrome, Team Viewer Host, Manual Lucky 5 int for Microsoft Edge. Okay. Desktop, Word file, task, reformation, reformation in. If I open a document, um, a, a text document, again, I can move my mouse pointer over any element on the ribbons. Home, insert, design, layout, refer, bold, make, italic, it, underline, underline your text. The reformation in Ireland. As you see, um, NVDA will, will, will read every element that it, it moves the point, mouse pointer over. So again, if I come down to some text here. Unlike similar movements for religious reform on the continent of Europe, the various phases of the English Reformation. So if I, if, if I want to read um, line by line, I can just use my up and down arrow key. Ireland, however, the government's policy was not embraced by public opinion of the population continued to adhere to Roman Catholic Ireland in government policy to which public If I want to pause the speech, I can just press the shift key. And then if I want to resume reading again, I press the shift key again. Opinion in England gradually accommodated itself. Spe if I want to stop the speech, I press the control key. To read all of the text, I press the 
NVDA key and down arrow. Now, NVDA key uh, means two keys, basically. It can be either the caps lock key or the, in, the insert key, depending on your particular laptop or desktop PC. You can use either key, whichever is most convenient. So in this case, I'm going to use the um, caps lock key as the NVDA key. So to read all, I will press caps lock and down arrow. You will accommodate it itself. Spelling error S in Ireland, however, the government's policy was not embraced by public opinion. The majority of the population continued to adhere to Roman Catholicism. Okay, so that's the read all command. If I wanted to read the current line, it's the caps lock key or NVDA key and up arrow. In government policy, to which public opinion in England gradually accommodated itself. Spelling error S in. Okay. Um, so that's just some of the uh, the main keyboard commands for reading text with NVDA. Now, for a student who wants to just use to use the speech um, occasionally as when they need it, you can have it turned off, and you can just use the keyboard command um, NVDA key and S, which is caps lock key and S, to turn the speech on or off. Speech mode off. And I need to press it twice to bring it back on again. So speech mode beeps. Speech mode talk. So caps lock key and S will toggle the speech on or off. So a student who only wants to put speech on at particular times can once they have it running in the background and can toggle it as they need it. Um, so just also uh, NVDA can be a very useful um, from people are typing text. So I'm just going to go to a new blank document here. So I'm just going to document for Word. Microsoft Word document edit multi. And I'm just going to type some text here. So, um, N V A N I O O F R E three S R E R E O E R. So you can hear it there that it was echoing every character that I spoke, which and um, for somebody who's starting off typing, um, it can be useful to hear it echo each word to know you're typing the right thing. But for most people who use screen readers, they would find that quite irritating and they would prefer that it would just um, echo the, um, the words, if at all, basically. So to turn on the echo, the screen echo of characters, you press the NVDA key and two, which is caps lock and two, so. Speak typed characters off. Speak typed characters off, I press it again, it would toggle it on again. Speak typed characters on. Speak typed characters off. Screen reader. Which. B. Downloaded. So again, it's just at the moment it's just reusing, spe speaking the words as I type them, which for most people is, is sufficient. Um, if I wanted to change it so it wouldn't speak the words, I can press the key NVDA key plus three, which again is caps lock key and three in this case. Speak typed words off. Speak typed words on. Okay. So there are just some of the main commands for for using uh, NVDA. An introduction to using NVDA. Now you can also um, desktop list. You can, also, you can also go to the NVDA settings and you can change the voice, the pitch, the rate in the settings. And to access the NVDA settings, you press the NVDA key and N, which is caps lock and N. NVDA menu, Pre prefer setting, NVDA speech. Speech two of thirteen. And here we can change the voice, whether male or a female voice. The change the volume. Voice open. Voice mic. Panel automatic language switching panel. Just use it again. My micro. Okay. Desktop list. OBS Studio seventeen of eighty. Okay, so this is just a, a basic introduction to using NVDA screen reader. Um, remember, you can always contact your local NCBI worker to get support with individual training or access lesson plans when working with NVDA or other assistive technologies. Um, you can join me in a second video on using NVDA where I will look at how NVDA works with various web browsers, including Chrome and Firefox, and also how NVDA works with various email applications, including Microsoft Outlook and Gmail. OK, so that was a good overview of the NVDA platform uh, kindly made 
by Seamus Brett, our, one of our IT trainers. And um, yeah, as Seamus mentions there, he will be following up with uh, such applications uh, like Outlook, and we'll be looking at that fairly shortly. But first of all, I want to bring in uh, my colleagues here um, on, on the panel and just to pose a question to him. So basically, what is MVDA? And I suppose, why would somebody use that if uh, one of our panelists want to jump in and take that? Well, I can answer, uh, Daniel. I mean, NVDA stands for Non-Visual Desktop Application. So I suppose by its very definition, it's non-visual. So it's designed for people who are blind or with low vision, as uh, Seamus alluded to. Now, it has a wide and varying range of functionality that would help a lot of people, including, for example, people with literacy issues, for people who are totally blind, for people with, with some vision or with low vision, who, again, would experience, you know, visual the vision fatigue and who would maybe become tired of, of reading a long document or a long email as uh, Seamus pointed out there you can quickly turn NVDA on and just press one of its read all keys and you'll have everything read for you on the screen so it really is a really good functional alternative for people with, who are blind or who are with low vision. Yeah definitely I like it the way um, you know that it can just sit in the background and it can be um, brought forward when needed and retired when not needed I, th I think that's um, definitely one of um, you know what one great function that that it offers. And we have to include here as well. I mean, it's it's very good and it's very generous in that it's it's freeware. It's a free alternative for for people. And I mean, not everyone can afford some of the high costs. Um, interventions. Other screen readers that can be expensive. Yeah. Well, that can be very expensive. And like I've always felt in my position that I was. I was dangling a great carrot before people, or where I would talk, blind people in particular, where I was saying that you could access all of this material, all of this information through the internet, through not through your computer, but. Mm -hmm. It's a bolt on, it's, it's a problem that you would have to load onto your computer. So it's an extra cost of roughly around 800 euros for some of these screen readers. Whereas now we have the free alternative. Okay, NVDA would like a contribution, but as yeah. Seamus alluded to, it's not compulsory, it's optional. So therefore we have we, we have this option for people who can't afford, you know, the state-of-the-art, finely tuned options yeah. such as we say, Jaws. Yeah, and I suppose, and then if you if you feel like you've used the software, and I suppose you do want to make a contribution to them, you could always pop back to their website and donate there, give them give them a few euro for their efforts. Um, definitely will be worthwhile doing. Um, Brian, we're just for, going for, to take what you're going to get from this device. It would definitely be worth a contribution, you know. I agree. Yeah, and um, Brian, just stand by. We're going to go back to Seamus now, and um, as he mentioned there, we're going to take a look at some of the applications where NVIDIA can be uh, help. Um, we're going to take a look today at the Outlook uh, email program. Um, we'll join you back there in a moment. So, hello and welcome to a video on using the NVIDIA screen reader with the email application Microsoft Outlook. When we open the Microsoft Desktop. Outlook application, Outlook. the layout consists of three columns. The folder, the folder list first, then the message list, and finally the current message or email, the text of the current message or email. Now with NVDA to you to move between the different sections of the email program, the Microsoft Outlook email program, we use the F6 key to move forward and the shift F6 key to move in the reverse direction. So I'm going to press the F6 key to move forward. Table view table. Group by expanded date. Today grouping expanded row one column. From being web. And I'm now in the message folder. I press F6 again. Dialog. Message edit multi line Highlander. And I'm in the message folder there. And if I want to reverse to go back, I press, press Shift, Shift and F6 to go back. Table view, mail folders, tree view, level two inbox, 1000. Now I can also press Shift and F6 and I can go to the navigation bar. Navigation bar grouping. <laughs> And here I can use my left or right arrow key to move to different elements of the program. Calendar button, ca people button, tasks, navigation menu, calendar, mail button, mail, control plus one, preview not available, mail folders, tree view. In okay, so when I want to send a new email in Microsoft Outlook, I use the hotkey control and N. 
Untitled message. This opens up a new message at the to field, and I'm just going to put in an email address. So I'm going to press in for one of my test email addresses. In. And just press enter to select that one there. Bean West. Bean West lesson by West zeros. And to move forward to the different parts on different elements of a, a message body or any other body, we use the tab key to move forward and the shift and tab key to move in reverse. So I'm going to tab as far as the subject line. CC B subject edit alt plus U blank. And I'm going to touch type in H E L O. And I tab to my message edit mode. And I'm going to type in just a message. A at T O L. D-I-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-O-S-
Outlook send slash receive progress dialogue. One of two tasks have completed six inbox and bind west zero zero. That just checks for any messages to be sent or any new messages coming in. If I wanted to move a particular email to a particular folder, I can press the hotkey um, Control Shift and V to move it. Control Shift and V. Move items dialog. Move the level one in level two school work. One unread messages. One of. And I just select once I've a down arrow key on the list of folders just to find the one I want, and then I press Enter to move it to that folder. Inbox and find West zero zero two. And it has moved that email to that folder. Um, So I, um, if I also if I wanted to um, create a new contact, I can just press Control Shift and C. Untitled contact dialog. And this opens up an edit box where again, um, using the tab key to move between the elements, the Shift tab to move back, I can fill in the name, the uh, person's email address, and whatever, um, and that will save it as a contact. Um, Usually when you reply to people on in programs such as Microsoft Outlook, it automatically saves their contacts, their details in your in your contact field anyway. So Inbox and find with. Another thing that uh, NVDA does quite well here with Microsoft um, Outlook is in terms of reading the ribbons and things. So if I press the Alt key, ribbon tabs, tab can it opens up a list of hotkeys that gets me into the different um, ribbons and menus. So if I press F, it will open the file menu. F. Open and save a sa save. Office account. Print, print, alt. Table view, take. And if I press the ribbon alt tab, again, tab, control, expanded. And this time press H for my home ribbon. H. I can then just um, press my down arrow. New key. grouping. New emails. And it will read each of the elements on the ribbon. So I'm pressing down arrow key to move once and then pressing my um, left or right arrow key or my tab key, um, shift tab to move forward and back. Team viewer grouping, move and delete grouping, archive, move collapse, respond grouping, reply all button, re forward button, forward this item to someone else. Alt, H, F, W, control, table view. Okay. So overall, the Microsoft um, Outlook email application works well with the NVDA screen reader. Um, if you are a low vision user who uses your mouse pointer to move around, um, it will read the elements as you move them over them. Um, Inbox, two sent item, drafts, new email, new meeting, new send slash archive, move. From Bean West, subject test email. From Bean West, subject message. Now, what I find here is that when you um, move your mouse pointer over the text in Microsoft Outlook, it doesn't automatically read the text back to you. So you just need to just um, click to dialogue. Bean West lesson. And then use the read all command, which, as we all know, is the NVDA and down arrow key, which again. As I said in the previous video, either the caps lock key or the insert key, whichever you prefer, with the down arrow key, and that was your read all command. So I'm going to press the caps lock key and down arrow key here. And into this is a test email for this video, John. So for low vision users, it will read as you move your mouse pointer over elements. It will read all of the elements for text. You do need to use the read all command to to read a lot of the text. Um, that's a quick overview of using the NVDA screen reader with Microsoft Outlook. Again, I hope you found this video useful. Um, remember, as always, you can contact your local NCBI worker to get support with individual training or access to lesson plans when working with programs such as NVDA or other assistive technologies. You can also access all these videos again on the NCBI Labs or NCBI YouTube channel. And thanks again for, watch for watching. So Seamus, uh, thank you very much for that um, fantastic overview uh, of Outlook using NVDA. And I suppose I just want to go back to our panelist uh, and just to reintroduce him, Brian Manning and Joe Lonergan. Um, just to pose a question to the lads that uh, I know it's at the end, um, James alluded to, he was using the mouse to hover over the icons on the screen and NVDA announcing for him. But what would the advantages of, of um, using keyboard shortcuts 
with Outlook be? Uh, well, I find with keyboard shortcuts with Outlook, it makes things quicker and it helps you navigate through Outlook easier if you learn how to use the keyboard shortcuts. Like um, he, he went through a few of the keystrokes there, Seamus, very well. Like, uh, you know, control N for new message, control R to reply to a message. They're all very easy, easy to remember. N for new, R for reply, you know, that kind of way. So it's, um, yeah. There's big advantage of learning all your keystrokes, and it's um, easy to get a list of them in front of you. If you do insert in W, it'll get you can get, get remind yourself of the keyboard shortcuts if you forget any. So I think yeah. I think the importance of programs were Outlook, like Outlook, were really brought to bear uh, about three or four years ago. Because up to three or four years ago, Microsoft and Windows had available free email programs such as Windows Live Mail. And they were brilliant because like they, 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 they were sister programs to Outlook. So you had all of your shortcuts, like your Control R, your Control N, your Control F. But um, about three years ago, Microsoft started, stopped supporting Windows Live Mail. So people had to move to alternative um, mail uh, catchers such as you know Thunderbird or whatever. And I think especially vision impaired or blind people, screen reader users that were used to these shortcuts kind of felt the absence of Windows Live Mail or Outlook. And it's only recently now again that people are starting to use kind of Outlook in, you know, Office 2000, Office 365, etc. that the value of those shortcuts are being reinforced for blind or in vision impaired people or screen reader users in general. Yeah, I'd agree. I agree. It's, um, it's a very solid, Outlook, it's a very solid program. It's like years ago, there used to be Outlook Express and things like that. It was similar to Windows Live Mail. But as, as Brian said, yeah, it has to be replaced and, and people are moving to Outlook. So it's it's a great email client. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and like she as Seamus said there um, in his presentation, like with the with, uh, Outlook and NVIDIA, it, it seemed to work very, very well. So for somebody who is, um, you know, somebody who's once an email client is supposed to go on to a web page, um, you know, and logging in that way, and that they want their email offline, I suppose, that they can have um, a client such as Outlook, and it works very well. So, guys, thanks very much for your input. Um, don't go anywhere, though. Um, we are going to take a look at a thing called Rate Boost within NVDA. And uh, this was kindly put together by uh, Sean Dorn. And we will um, we'll just have a listen to this. and. Um, We'll come back with a few questions again in a few moments. So a lot of people use NVDA with Windows Core Voices and uh, Windows Core Voices while speaking really clear and uh, have good tone. Um, they often don't speak fast enough for people who are more used to it, like so read with eloquence. Uh, we set a much higher rate of speed. So NVDA recently added a boost feature to its preference menu, which allows us to greatly increase the speed of the vocalizer. So I've set zero as my insert key for my NVDA key. So I'm going to press insert and N for NVDA menu. For the NVDA menu, I'm going to press P for preferences. Settings. S. I'm going to press S for settings. NVDA settings. General, normal configuration, dialogue. Categories, list, general. So that's probably to the general settings. Uh, and I'm going to down arrow till I get to speech. Speech two of 13. And I'm going to uh, tab into the synthesizer settings. Speech property page, synthesizer grouping, synthesizer edit read only multi line alt plus S. Windows One Core Voices. So I set to Windows Core Voices at the minute. And I have Microsoft David selected, which is very much like Keith Carradine, the actor's voice. Very, very similar to it, but I'm going to tab until I get to rate. Change. Button Alt plus H. Voice. Combo box Microsoft David collapsed Alt plus V. Rate. Slider AD Alt plus R. Okay, and uh, I'm going to lower the rate considerably before I put on the, the rate boost, or else it will be very, very high. So I'm going to. 79. Down arrow through the, the rate slider. 78. 77. 70. 70. 47, 38. Uh, it's very, very slow at 38. I'm going to tab to the rate boost checkbox. Rate boost checkbox not checked, Alt plus T. And I'm going to press space bar on that to check it. Space. Check. 
now we're going to tab away from it. As you can see, the David voice, while it's only at 30 odd percent now, is speaking extremely fast. I'm going to shift tab back up to rate. And I'm going to down arrow down to for about 10 percent. 13. So 10 percent there is about roughly what 100 percent of normal speed was before we activate a rate boost. So I'll turn it up to about 50 just 14. to see how fast that'll be. 47, 48, 49, 50. So that's 50 and I'll tab back down to uh, rate boost checkbox. As you can see it reads quite fast. I'll, I'll shift tab back up to the device selector. And I'm going to tab back to rate. And I'm going to lower the speed back down to about 30. So as you can see, when that rate boost is activated, it greatly increases the Windows Core Voice's speed, which will make it more comfortable for people who want to, you know, navigate much more quickly. And then after that, there I can tab to apply. And space bar to space. Press categories right. list. Speech two of fifteen. Speech property page. Category apply button. Categories list. Speech two of fifteen. Okay, and then all that forward close. So that's the speed change. So just to reiterate that, we'll try that quickly again. We're going to insert NBA again. P for preferences. S. And then S for settings. NBA settings. General normal configuration. Right, down arrow to speech. speech two I'm going to tab until I find the rate slider, and if you haven't turned this on before, I'd lower it to about 37 percent, 30 ish percent before you turn it on. Speech property change, voice, combo box, micro rate, slider 31, all plus R. So that's on 31 there, so I'll say 20, 27. I'll turn it to 27, and I'm going to tab the rate boost, which we already turned on. Rate boost checkbox, check all plus E. I'm going to turn off rate boost now by pressing spacebar. Space. Not checked. And you can see how slow David is at that speed. So this will give us the option to while rate boost is on, if we only need it around 30%, which would be about as quick as it normally would be, and we want to make it really fast, we can put it up to about 70%. So I'm going to turn it back on with spacebar. Space. Check. Shift tab back up to rate. Rate. Slider 27 all plus R. I'm going to pop that up to about 50. 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, and it's quite fast. So I could put that to 100 or I could put that to whatever it would be. So I'm just going to tab to apply. And press it. Space bar. Press it. And Alt F4. Go back to Windows menu. And then, like I said, I press the Windows key, for example. You can see that yeah, 50%, it is now going very fast. So that's just giving you an idea of how Windows Core Voices can go much faster if we turn on the new rate boost feature. Oh, Thanks very much for that, Sean. Um, very interesting. It reminds me of the, on the iPhone with the voice over the way you can speed that up extremely quick. I know some of the more experienced voice over users, they enjoy a speaking rate that is much, much faster. So, um, right, I'm going to hand you over uh, for a few moments to JP Corcoran, who is going to chair a little questions and answers section on the NVDA. So over to you, JP. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, this is one of two questions, John. I, I really enjoyed that um, video there. Thanks, thanks for that. I just uh, one, one question that has, has come in there regarding the NVDA rate boost feature, and it's asking, are, are, are you aware of, of any NVDA users, John, who have either tried out or who are using indeed using the rate boost feature uh, for Windows uh, One Core Voices? Um, it's only about uh, a month enabled, yeah. so I haven't met anyone who's actually using it yet, but yeah. I have met people who've switched to Windows One Core Voices because yeah. Eloquence was no longer available yeah. without paying a subscription uh, or buying Eloquence for NVDA. And within yeah. Eloquence, the read or EED voice uh, yeah. it can be set to a much faster rate and we used to a much faster rate. And mm. people who didn't yeah. want to... Uh, pay the extra money for eloquence. We're using the Windows Core voices and 
they really liked the clarity of the voice and how sort of natural it sounded. Yeah. But they did miss the speed difference. So now that this is available, I would urge people to go back now and maybe try enabling it with speed. To give it a go. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm right in saying that if, if you install uh, NVDA for the first time on a Windows 10 computer, the default uh, voice is it's, it's Windows, Windows 1 core, isn't it, that you have? It's Windows 1 core, but uh, it's in the language settings. Uh, I think Seamus had it set to Irish there, so he was mm. using the more Irish voices. I mm. like to go into my lang language preferences and activate the American voices, and then it'll download the language packs for David. For and David. Then, I, then I'll then i set my preferences back to Irish mm. preferences, but when I close NVDA and reopen it, uh, it'll be the extra voices in the Windows One core yeah. list, such as Perfect. David. Does David. I, I liked your, your, your comparison to uh, David to uh, Keith. Key Cardi and actor. When I first started using NVDA and I was I was defaulting to David, it took me about a week to realise which person it sounded like. I, cu I couldn't think of who it was, but yeah. I finally narrowed it down to uh, Keith Cardi. Uh, 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 they must have modelled it on him. Uh, okay, well, th no, thanks, Sean. That, that's great. No, uh, thanks for the demo. That's great. Okay, I'm actually hand it back to you there, Daniel. Yeah, um, we just have two questions in um, on our questions and answers panel here. So I'll just uh, maybe draw these back to the boys, uh, Joe and Brian. Um, is NVDA more cost effective uh, than JAWS screen reader? So I well, that. well, obviously NVDA is free, OK, but that doesn't mean it's any better or anything like that. So I, I suppose JAWS is more suited to a work environment because it's um, there's more support behind it. It's a uh, more advanced program, in, in my opinion, and it's got more features. So, for example, JAWS has features like OCR built in, which JP is going to demonstrate la later on. It's got JAWS command search built in, which is a really useful tool, and I'm going to show you how to use that. And um, there's also a, a great feature called Picture Smart, where you can um, scan your pictures. They're just uh, the extra features built in, apart from the fact it works with um, all the um, Microsoft Office programs. Of yeah. course, NVDA does it also, but I think um, personally, uh, I've, I've worked with JAWS all my uh, working life, and I find it's a very stable program. Mm -hmm. um, there, there will be NVDA, NVDA users out there that will disagree with me, and um, yeah. but th there's more voices available as well with JAWS. Um, I, su I suppose, in a, in a sense, Joe, it kind of comes down to personal preference, and you know, like somebody will fall in love with one program, somebody will fall in love with another, and that's just going to be life, I think. <laughs> personal preference in some ways, but I think there will yeah. be some workplaces that may, may not let you use NVDA, and they yeah. may, may prefer to use the security of JAWS over NVDA, you know, that kind of way. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I, in some in some cases, it's personal preference. In others, it's, yeah. it's different. Yeah. Okay. There's another uh, point made here. Um, I, it says caps lock toggle on on off action and question mark. So, I presume and that's um somebody maybe inquiring a little bit about the modifier button. Maybe could somebody uh, explain the modifier button and its function? Yeah. Uh, and then, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Brad. Go on. Go on. I was just going to say, in, in, like, like Seamus was saying, in NVDA, you get the choice um, to set it to insert or cap locks or even enter. You can switch between which one suits you best. And um, it, it's because of a laptop keyboard, some of them might not have a numpad. And we all like using the zero key, which is also insert. Mm -hmm. So it gives you the option of maybe switching it to cap lock so it's more comf comfortable to find rather than, you know, a smaller insert button that's not on, that's not the zero button on a numpad. Yeah, often often they can be a narrow little key that runs across a strip across the top. Um, and it can, um, it can vary from one laptop to the other where yeah. the insert key is. Yeah, yeah. That's just a very good point, John. And f finally, um, another question here. Is there a difference between apply and OK in the sentence? So I think that's just coming to the end of your one, John, when you were um, you know, applying changes that you've made in the menus. Uh, and why didn't you press OK there? <laughs> Well, yeah, well, well, apply, well, apply the, the changes that you have made and then OK would normally close the window. But once it's applied, you can close the window more or less any way you want. Yeah. But yeah, if the person's right, it's better practice to go to the OK button after hitting apply just yeah. to double check. Yeah, I suppose it gives you a chance maybe to review if you wanted to make another change um, before getting out of there. Absolutely. Okay. Um, well, that's the 
questions we have in for the moment on NVDA. So uh, next up, I'm glad to welcome uh, Brian Manning from the People's Republic of Cork, who is going to give us an introduction to JAWS uh, and an overview uh, of the JAWS platform. And uh, we're going to hand over there to Brian. So I think Brian has just to queue up his uh, system for for coming in here, so we, this might just take. Yeah. You ready to go there, Brian? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, um, the thanks to the last for asking, inviting me here today to give a general overview of Jaws. And I suppose the first question to ask is, what is JAWS? And I think that that question has already been very comprehensively answered here today. JAWS is a screen reader. It will read anything that's on the screen, or at least most things that are on the screen. It is uh, it stands for Job Access with Speech. That's where JAWS, the term JAWS comes from. Um, it's aimed or targeted or would, it was designed for people with no vision or low vision. So people who are blind or with very low vision. And how it works essentially is it just assumes that the George, that the screen reader user, the JAWS user cannot see the screen. So therefore it bypasses the screen. It, it also assumes or takes for, granted, takes for granted that the person can't use the mouse. So therefore it bypasses the mouse. So essentially you have speech output through the voice screen reader and you have keyboard input through the keyboard. Now, I suppose the advantage to the way JAWS works is that it's a combination of JAWS keystrokes and Windows keystrokes. So therefore, that allows the person to take their already existing knowledge of Windows and the various keystrokes within Windows and allows them to apply them in a, a JAWS functional environment. So therefore, for example, if you're a parent and you want to learn JAWS, for your child who's going to school, for example, you can use the Windows keystrokes that you're going to be using with your child in jo with jo using JAWS and apply them to your everyday use of, of your computer. So the keystrokes that you're going to be using with JAWS are very much Windows keystrokes. So you can use them at work, that you can use them on your own, um, on your own Windows environment. So that's one advantage to it. The se another advantage to it is, I mean, if you think of it, any good computer user will tell you that anything that you can do anything at least three different ways on a computer. So if you want to exit the program, you can do it any three ways. If you want to open the program on the computer, you can do it any three ways at least. And it's the same when you're using the keystrokes with JAWS and with Windows. So for example, that's how JAWS works. Okay, so now for example, just to give you an example as to how JAWS actually works, it's a screen reader. So if I press the Windows key, and hopefully you now you, you will hear my audio output from um, my computer. So if I hit the Windows key, which is the start menu, so I can just arrow down on and here, JAWS will read everything as I arrow down. Brian, I just don't think your audio has been shared there, Brian. Can I try it again? Jaws professional. Yeah, oh. yeah, perfect. Sorry about that, lads. So again, the screen reader will literally echo anything that's on the screen. So if I hit my Windows key, it brings up my start menu. Search box edit. So if I arrow down, I'll hear all apps check. Max audio pro number three D viewer A. Okay. So escape, you escape. can hear everything. So as I arrow down, Jaws echoes everything as I arrow down to my list of menus. So for example, I'm going to go into a program. I'm going to go to Microsoft Word and demonstrate the key values of JAWS within Microsoft Word. So I'm going to hit the start menu. Search box. I'm going to press W for Word. W Word app. Press, press right enter. enter. Opening. So again, I'm just box. opening a program using the keyboard, and JAWS echoes everything to me as I do it. So now I'm in the backstage view in Microsoft Word. I'm going to press the escape button to come to print view. Escape. Print view. So now as I type, as Seamus already demonstrated using NVDA as I type JAWS will echo each letter as I type it. So I'm gonna call I'm gonna type out S O I R C E space S space M H space space misspelled H Y space A M E 
space at space ab y space at u ab b r space zero eight seven. I'm intentionally putting seven, this phone number here because f y f two. Escape, escape, custom. Actually, put in this phone number because I want to sure, demonstrate something in the way. S, S, U, P, P. Pot escape, P. Jaws Prof. NCBI Lab Contact Colin Thomas Kelly Microsoft Teams Call in Progress NC Document 1-7 at Lang. Okay, sorry, guys, I just did have one accident. Did 7 3 3 So I just put in a phone number there now, okay? So now, as I said, Jaws will enter. read everything as I type it. and. And like that, Seamus demonstrated a while ago, you can opt to have letters, characters echoed, words echoed, lines echoed. So to do that, you would just do the JAWS uh, key, which is the insert key. I'm using the insert key on the bottom, uh, on the keyboard panel, just to the right of the right arrow key. If I, if I hold up and press the number two. Words, both characters, none, characters. So I can, I can decide to have words, letters, characters, and words. Words are nothing echoed. Okay, so I've just opted to have um, characters echoed because I think it's a great support, especially for someone who's starting off using screen readers, to have the confidence of what you're typing echoed to you character by character. The more the, the more experienced you become as a JAWS user, then you may decide to just have words echoed or lines echoed, etc. Okay. So now again, like she was demonstrated a while ago, and I don't want to to uh, go over all ground, but you can with JAWS in a letter, in a, an email, or a website, or whichever you can arrow down to have it, your lines echoed at a time, or you can do your JAWS key with down arrow and have the whole thing echo, the whole thing called up to you. That's the say all uh, say all command. Um, now again, there, where JAWS comes into its own as regards uh, functionality, functionality as a, a screen reader is you can adapt it, you can change some of the JAWS settings to, so that you can enjoy a, a more complete and better reading experience. So for example, we live in Ireland, we have some very flowery, flowery and lovely place names and person names. So for example, Sorsha. Okay, so Sorsha is the Irish for George. And obviously the screen re most screen readers are designed in places like America, Australia, like NVDA, or Supernova is designed in England. So therefore they don't have an appreciation of our lovely of our lovely language and place name. So for example, I just call I just typed in there Sorsha is my name and my phone number is. Now I'm just gonna give you a fee for how George will pronounce that. Initially, Lang misspelled. Swars is my name and my number zero eight seven 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 three 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 four four four. Okay. No. And Lang four four three seven eight zero eight zero eight. Number R space zero two 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 two. Enter. Lang Lang misspelled. Swars is my name and my number zero two 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 two. Alright, okay. So it's calling out source uh, there, okay? Well, instead, uh, so Jaws is calling out the proper, the proper name, okay? So now what I'm going to, there, there is a functionality within Jaws where you can just do go into what we call the Jaws dictionary manager and change how a word is pronounced, okay? Is misspelled Swars. So let's go to go into the Jaws dictionary manager with the Jaws key and D. Word.jdf dash jaws dictionary manager. Or tab over to add dictionary delete but add dot enter add dictionary definition dialog actual word colon edit swars replacement. So we're typing a word that phonetically sounds like uh, Shorsha. So I'm going to type in maybe S H O R S A. So that's what I'm just going to do jaws key and up arrow to hear what the new word will sound like. Replacement word. Call and edit Shorza. That's something more like it's me. Sound code. Select sound dot dot play sound. Apply speak repeat case sense it. Okay, but enter add dot dot. So dot, dot, dot save it to the dictionary. So I'm going to control S. So I'm going to press Alt F4. Alt F4. Document. So now I'm going to hear. Lang. Misspelled. Shorza is my name and my number zero. Okay, now that number there, okay. A lot of people will get confused with Jaws because. Jaws will put, like, for example, if you were to type in a number like 087. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jaws, when it's set up initially, we call out that number as maybe zero, eight trillion, seven hundred and forty two million, four hundred forty six billion. So, what you can do is you can change that, okay? If you go to the setting center, which is the, the, the place in Jaws where you can make all of these changes. So, I'm in Microsoft Word. If I press the Jaws key on the number six, 
Word dash jaws setting center dialog. Search box edit. Type in. So I'm just going to type in. We say numbers to change the way jaws pronounces numbers. So I'm going to go. N U M. Number B. Number and date processing. Number and date processing. Search results. Okay, so I'm going to arrow down here now to send numbers. For search number processing controlled by synthesizer. If number contains eight or more digits, speak single digits number and date cross space controlled space five or more digits. So it's five. gonna take five or more digits. Read okay. only apply button to enter for search results list box. If number escape, search edit box cl- web slash html slash escape document one dash so if i go, go off to my uh, sentence there again misspelled short says my name and my number zero two 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 okay so it's pointing out the number properly okay i know i know it, it, it did it a while ago as well because i had actually changed this so i'd actually changed this a while ago to make sure that, that it would work so essentially in jaws if it's calling out long extended numbers as in the millions and the trillions you can go to jaws number six type in the word number come down uh, to uh, number description just press the space bar until you have five numbers or more apply it and escape and that will change it to for jaws to call out the the number in a character by character string so that's just an example of the dictionary manager and of the um number processing for example in the jaw setting center and within the jaw setting center you can make changes to a lot of the functionality of jaws so for example you can change the, if jaws will call out capital letters how jaws will act in a, a website for example how jaws will behave when setting up different braille displays so the setting center is very very important so you can you can access the um, setting center from anywhere by doing the jaws key and the number six and that will bring you into the setting center and to access the dictionary manager from anywhere do jaws and d now it is important to do jaws d and if you're in microsoft word the, the changes that you make to the dictionary manager will only take effect within the dictionary manager but if you do, do jaws d and control shift d then whatever changes you make will affect right across applications right across the board so for example if you make a change as to how source is is pronounced in microsoft word once you do the control shift d it will extend to for example the internet so if you see source on the internet and the website it will also just see the change recognize the change and give it the proper phonetic uh, pronunciation um i'm just going to check on time i'm just going to give you a quick example of jaws on the internet okay so i'm just going to go bring up my start menu again Cortana. We're going to use Google, uh, Google Chrome, okay? G, search box edit, G, type in text, Google Chrome app, press right to switch preview. Okay, so I'm just going to look at a quick, have a quick look at a newspaper. So I'm going to do Alt and E to jump into the menu option. Alt E. Alt E. This is not working. Find results and apps. Escape, escape, document one that one. Cortana. G, search box edit, G, type in text, Google Chrome app, press right to switch preview. So I'm going to go enter here. Enter, new tab dash Google Chrome, address and search. Okay, so now I'm going to do my alt and E to jump to my... Alt E, context menu, so jump B, B, jump to my bookshelf, sub menu, bookmarks. six of bookmarks menu, text only vertical bar. Text only examiner. So again, text the... Slash, the job. Is very, very fluid and functional in reading websites, especially well designed websites. The most uh, public administration websites, newspaper websites, etc. They're really, really well laid out now on JAWS. They're really JAWS friendly. And again, the, the advice I would always give to someone is if you're starting off on a website for the first time and you're a screen reader user, the best practice is to arrow down through the website and get a familiarity with the website. Other than that, how JAWS behaves in a website is obviously you cannot just go into a website and change the, the, the design or the layer of the website willy-nilly so that frees up the keyboard so it allows JAWS and all screen readers are have followed on JAWS now so for example if you want to jump to a heading on a website you can just press H if you want to jump to a table on a website you can just press T if you want to jump to a, a button on a website you just press B if you're on the Ryanair website for example you want to, want to fill in a form, you can just press F for form. So here I'm in the Irish Examiner and I want to jump to the first heading. So I'm just going to press H. IrishExaminer.com that Ireland visited heading level 3 link. Press enter. enter. Ireland heading level 3 link. So I'm going to text only just vertical to the bar Irish heading Examiner. Here by pressing H. Has 3 headings and 47 links. Heading level wrapping to top. Heading level 1 Irish Examiner. 
Visited heading level heading level four thirty. So that's Arlen down on her recent individual head uh, article. Link pandemic payment to be reduced for part dash time workers. Tab lang. Link one more death announced as minor relaxation of court lang. Link PD for the challenge lack of. I'm just gonna read that article. Just press enter on it. HTTPS colon slash slash www dot irish check some Thursday to blank the association which represents enlisted personnel in the I know if I want to read that a word at a time like Shane was demonstrated a while ago I can just do control and right arrow association which represents enlisted personnel if I want to read a letter at a time I can just press my right arrow key E R S O N N E L space if I want to read the entire document like Shane was again alluded to a while ago I can do my jaws key and down the association which represents enlisted personnel in the defense forces is to take a case on behalf of some of its members. And again, JAWS has views functionality. If I'm not sure where I am, I can just do my JAWS key and the letter T. Title is text only vertical bar Irish examiner dash Google Chrome. Text only so JAWS tells me the name of the web page I'm in and the name of the browser I'm in. If that was a document to Microsoft Word, it would call it the name of the document and tell me that I'm in Microsoft Word. If it was an Excel spreadsheet, it would call it the name of the spreadsheet and tell me that I was in Excel. So again, that's just some of the extra added functionality that JAWS has that maybe some of the other screen readers haven't uh, quite developed into yet. Um, and there are some of the main features of JAWS. Um, again, as I say, um, you can you you can implement extra features such as the dictionary manager, the JAWS setting center, um, and these are things that really make the JAWS experience hugely valuable. And the fact is that you are using the keystrokes and the Windows keystrokes in combination with the JAWS keystrokes means that there's a lot of learning for everyone in learning JAWS. And again, as I say, I mean, Alt F4, for example, it's not a JAWS keystroke, it's a Windows keystroke. Alt F4, for Microsoft. example, if we were to use a Seamus's earlier analogy in, Microsoft, in using Microsoft Outlook, Control R is a Windows keystroke, Control B, F is a Windows keystroke, Control N is a Windows keystroke. So therefore, there's great value in just learning these keystrokes anyway. And then obviously they have an added significance if you're a JAWS user. So that's my general overview of JAWS. And again, to reiterate that, I mean, anything that we've done here is basic enough. It's to maybe excite your interest. If you have any further queries or questions, or if you would like to avail of any in the visual training from NCBI, just send an email to labs at ncbi.ie and we'll put you in contact with your local labs uh, labs trainer and we will ensure that you will uh, get one-on-one -on -one individual training or group training in JAWS and again we can't overemphasize the significance of JAWS to a, to a blind person or to a person with low vision and it really has opened up a lot of opportunities for blind people in the areas of, of education, you know, access to the workforce, but more importantly, probably is overall quality of life. I think when it comes to all of these assistive technologies, the whole importance of quality of life and an enhanced life experience is is very, very vital as well. So I'll hand you back to Daniel now. Back Thanks. to the Midlands. Thanks very much, Brian. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, you know that that that's a fantastic overview there on what JAWS is and kind of you know what it does and some of the things you can do with it. Um, I just maybe want to run this question by you, maybe, and if Joe wants to step in and offer his opinion too, um, which of the screen readers is better for reading websites and especially with a focus uh, at online newspapers? Well, if I can just take that question first, I mean, there's a huge crossover between NVDA and, and JAWS in the key keystrokes, for example, you know, H will jump into a heading with, with NVDA the same as it will with JAWS. All of those keystrokes are pretty much the same. I mean, JAWS F7 will bring up your links in um, on a website with JAWS. The, the, you know, NVDA F7 will bring up your elements, as they call it, within a website. So there is a huge crossover. I just find JAWS to be more solid, more, more functional, uh, on websites, but that's again, as you said a while ago, Daniel, that's down to personal preference and maybe just my own Brian, experience. Brian and Joe, how do you find that we're often at the mercy of the website developers if they don't make it accessible, if they don't label the headings correctly, label tables correctly, or label buttons and links correctly? That all the good work you do in learning a screen reader can be sort of, you know, well, not undone, but it makes it much harder to navigate a website that hasn't been treated with screen readers in mind. 
that that can be the case. Uh, generally, it's it's rooted out a lot now. There is a there's very few websites that are not accessible at the moment, and a lot of time it's to their loss as well. So it's in their interest to make the websites more accessible if they want us to use them. Um, Jaws, look, uh, I suppose as long as there's text on it, it, it will read the website, um, and there's not too many graphics or it's not too much built around flash they'll be okay but yeah it it can be a nuisance at certain times i can't think of an example straight off the top of my head because maybe because i avoid some of those websites that are um not accessible but yeah it can it can be very annoying at times and uh, what i do if if i come across something like that and um it's worth my while i will send an email to the website and let them know come on you have to um improve your accessibility and there is certain companies that will come back and improve things over time yeah. Yeah. I do not bring things with that one. Yeah, and I mean, the whole thing is like there are traditionally uh, guidelines, accessibility guidelines set. I'm just thinking of the Bobby guidelines or the AAA accessibility guidelines yeah. that people can adhere to as well, that companies can adhere to. And a lot of the big corporate companies and a lot of the big, you know, um, the media companies are adhering to those basic accessibility principles. And again, I mean, as I'm sure this will be Joe's experience as well. When you're a JAWS user on a particular website, if you're if you're a frequent user, especially once you get to know the design and the layout of the website, then you can apply the different shortcuts that are there and that are available to you. And you can find that you can zoom around the website fairly quickly. You know, like, I mean, on a good website that I know and that I use a lot, I mean, I can get to where I want to go very, very quickly, probably even quicker than a, a mouse user will say. No, I might be able to read the material on the website as quick as a, a sighted person, but I can get to where I want to go on the website if I know it fairly quickly. So for example, if it's, a web, if it's a website I'm using a lot, I can just open the website, press the letter V, and it'll jump me to the last link I used on that website, press enter, and I could be there within a space of, of seconds, you know? All right, also you have the find function as well, so you can do control F, you can type in a word that you know that's going to be on the page. Um, it could be maybe, uh, you say, say for example, a sports or something, it could be a name of a football team, you know that it's going to be on the page, so it'll skip straight down to the middle of the page rather than having to navigate through it line by line. There's a lot of little quick shortcuts and uh, tips that we can give to people uh, when they're using certain websites. Um, le leaderboard, golf leaderboard, maybe there might be 150 names in it. You might pick out the name you want to find out what the score is or something. You, you, you do control F, type in the name of the person you're looking for and uh, press enter. It'll bring you straight down to the name. You know, these kind of little things, they're very useful. Make um, going through the website a little bit quicker. Apart from using your navigation keys that Brian mentioned, like B for button and H for heading. There's other little things you can do also. Yeah. Very good, lads. Um, gosh, thanks very much for that. So, I suppose your your overall take from that then is there's probably neither system any better or worse than the other. It's um, you know, it's it's it, they're both going to read read the website for you. Um, from that point of view, would you agree with that? Well, uh, I think Jaws is better. I right? but the, the, the NVDA <laughs> yeah, no, is, on NVDA is usable. Jaws is, is a better program, in my opinion. Well, I'm with Jaws, and I'm with Joe on that one as well. And I mean, I, I've been using Jaws twenty years at least. I'd say at this stage, and I would definitely, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make the the the, the transition personally to NVDA. Yeah. But I mean, a person starting with NVDA could go to Jaws. Definitely easy enough, whereas a person that's used to JAWS will probably find it difficult to, to move back to NVDA. Yeah. There is a few little things, I suppose. Um, some people using NVDA find they can use it um, with Team Viewer a little bit better, but but JAWS has a has a, um, a feature built in called JAWS Tandem, where yeah. you can remotely work with somebody else's computer that has the same version of JAWS as you have, and um, you can remotely access their computer, or maybe it might be a computer you have in work that you want to access from home. You might have the same version of JAWS on it. So there is uh, different reasons different pe people will use the two different programs. So yeah. As I said, it depends on the person too. And there's 840 reasons why you would might want to prefer to use NVDA over JAWS, and that's 840 euros. So <laughs> I thought I was going to. Um, 
in some like, cases, this one the Android and and uh, Android and Apple debate with this one, we just go on with Nvidia and Jaws. Well, unfortunately, guys, you weren't up to the up to that one. <laughs> Thanks very much, um, Brian, for that. That was a fantastic introduction, anyway, to Jaws. And as well, next up, we're going to um, take a look at the Jaws command search. Um, Joe, I believe you prepared this for us earlier, and um, it just takes us through the, the command search that that's in in Jaws itself. So. We'll let um, I think Sean is rolling that one up. Hello and welcome to this demonstration of JAWS command search. JAWS command search is a very useful feature built into the JAWS screen reader. The JAWS screen reader is a very powerful screen reader which works with many programs and as a result it has hundreds of keystrokes. So we will not um, remember all of these keystrokes. So JAWS has built in a feature called JAWS command search. This helps you to search for commands or keystrokes. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, few, a few ways that this um, might come in handy. So uh, how do we open JAWS command search? So we can open it a couple of ways. So one way is we could go into the help section of JAWS and enter on JAWS command search. And the other way is by using a layer keystroke. So a layer keystroke is two keys followed by another key. So in this case, it's insert and spacebar followed by J. And I'm going to do that now. Please. Search for JAWS commands dialog. Search for. Search for edit type and text forms mode. So I pressed insert space and J and this edit box popped up and now I can type in my query. So uh, my voice is speaking a little bit quickly, so I'm going to try and slow it down. I'm going to type in decrease voice speed. E. E. Decrease voice rate permanent. OK, so the first uh, option that popped up was decrease voice rate permanent. So that's good enough for me. I'm going to tab across. Decrease voice rate permanent. Windows plus alt plus control plus page down. Left select record dot one finger plus. So that was Windows alt control and page down. So I'm going to give that a go now and see can I slow down the voice. Slower, slower, slower. So that worked. I slowed down the voice by I I slowed down the voice by three increments. Now I'm going to give um give it another go. And so what if, what if we wanted to change? The actual voice, maybe to a real speak voice. If you if you prefer a human sounding voice, I'm going to close this now. Alt F4. Windows D. Windows D. And I'm going. To Jaws 2020 check seven. Windows D. I am back at the desktop. Windows D. I'm going to open up. Windows D. Jaws command search again. So Hold view list. <clears throat> the keystroke was um, insert space and J. Space. Search for JAWS commands dialog. Search for edit. Search for edit. Type and text. Now I'm going to type in change voice. C. E. So hopefully in my results, uh, voice profiles will pop up. Select a voice profile. Control plus insert plus S heading level 3 link. So that's the first option was select a voice profile. So the keystroke it announced was control, insert, and S. So we'll listen to that once more. All the voice adding level three link select a voice profile, control plus insert plus S. All the voice profiles you have defined will be presented in the list and make your selection and press enter. This works like the change voice profile option. Okay, I'm going to try the keystroke now. Select the voice profile dialog, default, combo box, eloquence, one of nine. To change the selection, use the arrow keys, alt plus D. So there's nine options. I have nine nine voices. The one we're using is eloquence, it's a, but I'm looking for a more real speak voice. So I'm going to press S to bring me down to pick Samantha. Samantha is a vocalizer real speak voice. S, happy five, S, happy five, X, S, Samantha vocalizer expressive premium, nine of nine. I'm going to press enter to select. <laughs> All the voice profiles you have defined will be presented in a list. Make your selection and press enter. This works like the change voice profile option in the JAWS user interface. Okay, I might speed that voice up a little bit. Faster. 
so the keystroke for slowing it down was alt windows control and page down and the keystroke for speeding up devices alt windows control and page up faster and slow it down back down. slower now i'm going to close out of alt f4 alt 2 5 windows d windows d alt 2 5 windows d folder view now so the last thing i'll show you is how to find keystrokes for OCR. So sometimes you might get a document uh, via email um, that has been scanned in by somebody into their computer and JAWS won't read the document. So you might need to look up your um, OCR keystrokes. I'm going to try the keystroke once more. So by the end of this, we will have memorized the keystroke. So it's insert space, space. and J. Search for JAWS commands dialog. Search for colon edit. I'm going to, the edit box has come up. I'm going to put my query in now, which is OCR. Oh, oh OCR PDF document. And the uh, keystrokes for OCR will appear in a list. So I'm going to tab over to the first one. OCR PDF document, JAWS key plus space, O, D heading level three link. And I'm going to press H. If that key didn't suit us, we may go on to the OCR different things or find out how to stop the OCR. I'm going to press H and go through the rest of the keystrokes. OCR window, insert plus space, O, W heading level three link. OCR layer help, insert plus space, O, shift plus slash heading level three link. Cancel OCR, just key plus space, O, Q heading level three link. So you get the idea. Um, when you type in OCR, it gives you a list of keystrokes, um, which is very handy, especially if you forget any any keystrokes. This can be a really useful tool. Alt F4. So I'll go back to the Windows D. Windows D. I'm back on my desktop now. But, um, I'll finish by saying that this. Uh, uh, command search, JAWS command search, can be also very useful when using uh, other programs like Microsoft Word, and it's really good in Microsoft, L Microsoft Excel also. also. Um, so when you're in Microsoft Word and you want to, we'll say for example, you want to find out keystrokes for font, while working inside Microsoft Word, you can press insert space J, and then type in font, and it will give you uh, some of the JAWS available keystrokes for font. And the same in Excel, you might be looking uh, looking for keystrokes for formulas, or you might be looking for keystrokes to find out how to read the column headings, or row um, titles, and things like that. So you could type in column into the command search while in Excel, and it'll give you the keystrokes for that also. So if you have any, if you need any more information about JAWS command search, or you want notes on this subject, you can contact labs at ncbi.ie. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, thanks very much for that, Joe. Um, very, very uh, good presentation here on the on the command search. Joe, just I suppose a quick question to you. Um, you know, when do you find you, you have the need to use this, uh, to search up a command, Joe? Well, the uh, simple answer to that one is um, when I forget uh, <laughs> a keystroke, <laughs> I suppose uh, that's when it comes in really handy, especially for those programs that I don't use that often. Yeah. It yeah, was so. like maybe the odd time I want to know it's in a picture, I might uh, do the command search for the picture smart keystrokes or um, the, the odd time I might forget a keystroke for uh, something in Outlook. And while I'm in Outlook, I can do uh, the insert space J keystroke, type in what I'm looking for and it'll bring up the keystrokes I'm looking for again, you know. Mm -hmm. So the same, it's it's really handy in, in Excel, as I mentioned there at the end. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Excel can be a complicated program, but this can take some of the complication away. So if you, you want, um, we say, keystrokes to help you with charts or something in Excel, yeah. you can type in the word charts into the search box and um, uh, hopefully the keystroke you're looking for will pop up in front of you and, uh, mm. you know, help you out. Uh, so, it's, so it's an extremely quick reference guide, I suppose. Um, you know, it's just putting it up there and just a quick search and closing it off and continuing on with your work. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. And as Joe said, it's impossible to remember all of these keystrokes. I mean, yeah. each individual application would have hundreds of keystrokes potentially. So it's a great way to, they're there at your behest as such, and it's great utility. Yeah. And they introduced this in, um, I think it was JAWS 16, uh, so about probably three years ago, or it could be four years ago now. And um, it, it was a godsend, really, I suppose, for for a lot of us. Um, I Look, I got on fine before, but look, it, it, it's a very useful tool since it has been introduced. Yeah, I suppose anything that makes life a little bit easier as you go along. And, and that, well, one, one more little place is um, the JAWS settings can be very um, uh, confusing for people to get around as you don't need to go in there that often. And um, th there can be people trying to change a voice. They're not exactly sure where to go and, and that kind of thing. As, as you've seen there, it's, it's a matter of, of doing the um, keystroke and typing in roughly what you're looking for. And uh, yeah. usually it brings you to the right place. So. Yeah. Um, it, it, within four or five keystrokes, I suppose, uh, it'll bring you to the right place anyway. Yeah. Okay. But thanks very much for giving us an overview on the JAWS command search, Joe. Um, next up, we are going to take a look at the OCR in JAWS, this uh, OCR function that's built into it. And JP Corcoran has uh, kindly presented uh, this piece that we're going to play. Hi everybody, so today I'd like to demonstrate how we can perform optical character recognition or OCR in the JAWS screen reader to read PDF files that contain images of text. So this could come in handy, for example, if someone was to email you a PDF document containing a scanned image of text, or if you were to download from the web this type of PDF file, which would otherwise be considered inaccessible. I'd like to note that the ability to perform OCR has actually been around in JAWS since version 13, but probably the most noticeable improvements to this feature were seen in JAWS 2018. Since the release of JAWS 2018, it's become possible, for example, to extract text not just from PDF images, but also from other type of image files, including JPEGs, GIFs, and PNGs. Okay, so I'd like to show you now the different ways we can perform an OCR in JAWS to read PDF files containing scanned images of text. I'd just like to note that the methods available to you may vary depending on the version of JAWS that you have installed on your computer at the moment. But for all methods, the first thing that we need to do is to save the PDF files to your computer. So I've saved them here to my desktop. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press Windows and D to go to my desktop. Windows D. I'm going to press S to go to the PDF document I'm looking for. S, folder view, list view, smartphone etiquette, 40 of 42. To move to items, use the arrow keys. To edit the selected item, press F2. Okay, now I know that this PDF contains a scanned image of text. I'm going to enter, press enter, the enter key now, the keyboard to open it. Enter. Document alert call an empty document dialog. This document may be a scanned image which makes it difficult or impossible for JAWS or Fusion to read without first scanning the document with OCR. Would you like JAWS to OCR the document now? Yes button to activate press space bar alt plus Y. Okay, so straight away we've been prompted with a message to say that this document may be a scanned image. And if we would like JAWS to run an OCR on it now. If you want to go ahead with this, we press the space bar or the enter key, which I'm going to do with what I'm doing now. Press the enter key. Enter. Document OCR started. Document. Smartphone etiquette. We've all been in a meeting where the person across the room is busy tweeting or Facebooking under the table or out to lunch with a duh. Okay, I'll press control to quieten JAWS. But we can see here that after the OCR is complete, it's opened up the text in what's called the results viewer or the virtual viewer. And at this point, I can arrow down through the different lines of text. To their smartphone that they place when your conversation will be blank. Almost everyone has a smartphone these days. I was press control to quieten JAWS. All the usual JAWS commands that we're familiar with. Insert and down arrow for say all. Almost everyone has a smartphone these days. I was one of the holdouts until about two weeks ago when I broke down down. I'll press control again to quieten it. Let's just say if we want to take this a step further here, say if we want to format this text perhaps or edit it or add our own text to it, what we can do is we can press control and A to highlight all the text. Selected 3874 characters of copy selections of clipboard. Let's open up a Word document pressing Windows key, W and then enter. Search. 
W words app enter. Opening dash opening dash word. Press enter. Open blank document. Microsoft Word document. Word print view edit. Now control and V to paste. Paste it from clipboard page two. At this point, we can format text. We can add our own text. Submit a quote out of table. Like. Interrupting, interrupting, bold off, italic, underline on. And of course, we can save the document to our computer if we wish. Alt F4, smartphone etiquette, file name, smartphone etiquette, file name edit, smartphone etiquette, okay. save, me, leaving, don't save button to activate press space, space bar, Alt plus N, space. Smartphone I'm etiquette dash OCR results. Alt F4, smartphone etiquette dot PDF dash Adobe, Alt F4, desktop, folder. Now we're back to our desktop, okay. So that's one way that we can form an OCR on JAWS. But let's see if we can do it another way. I'm going to press Windows and E now to open a file explorer. Windows E, file explorer, items view, multi-select list box, free on folders. Ex I'm going to arrow down to another PDF document that I know contains a scanned image of text, and it's called Palms Gourmet Deli. I'm going to arrow down to it now. Pick product, recent, smart, COVID, Palms Gourmet Deli. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to open up the context menu. You can do this two ways. You can open, you can press the application key on your keyboard if you have the application key there. Otherwise, you can press Shift and F10. Shift F10. Context menu to navigate. Okay, press so up or down arrow. Are, oh, open the Adobe menu. Acrobat DC. Oh. I'm going to arrow down to Convenient OCR with JAWS. Print E. Convenient OCR with JAWS. Oh. Okay. Enter. enter leaving menus file explorer items view multi-select list box recent files expanded palms gourmet deli this pc backslash desktop 11 of 28 to move to an item press the arrow keys document ocr start okay palm signature yeah. salads choice of dressing house italian caesar rancher thousand island palms house salad dollar five salad okay so as before the text has appeared in the virtual viewer or the results viewer and I can arrow down to read mixed it. screens, hearts of pop land, palms, famous cops, and mixed screens, shop land, California chicken salad, so dollar eight point uh, nine mixed screens, like chicken land, anti boss mixed for classic Caesar salad, dollar five point five up. Press control to quieten jaws, and exactly the same before, as before. I can press control on eight to highlight the text, copy it, and paste it into a Word document if I want to edit it. I'm going to press Alt and F4 now to close this document. Alt F4, File Explorer, Items View, Multi Select Alt List Box, Recent file Files, in Alt F4, Desktop, Full. Okay, we're back to our desktop. Now, I mentioned earlier that it's now possible to read text that's featured in a JPEG file with JAWS. So I am going to show you a JPEG that I have saved on my desktop. I'm going to arrow right to it here. It's called COVID Stay Protected. Um, COVID Stay Protected, 42 of 42. Yeah. Enter photos, COVID Stay Protected JPG. Okay, so here's the JPEG file that contains text, but I can't read it with JAWS at the moment. So all I need to do is open up File Explorer and see if I can get JAWS to read the text using uh, the OCR feature. I'm going to Alt F4. Alt F4, Desktop, Folder View List, Windows E. File Explorer, I view multi select list oh, box, free picture, product, recent COVID stay protected. Okay, now I'm going to do it a different way this time. I'm going to use the layered keystroke and JAWS. I'm going to press insert and spacebar, O, and then F. Space, O, OCR, document OCR started, pages right side up. Okay. So you can see here, here's a text on the screen. Blank. How can I protect myself from getting coronavirus left parent COVID-19? Wash your hands regularly and avoid touching your face with your hands. Hand gels with at least 60% alcohol content can be used if soap and water are not. Okay, so this is great. Then we have the text from our JPEG uh, available in the virtual viewer. Okay, so I'm going to press Alt and F4 to go back. Alt F4, to File Explorer, Items View, Alt F4, Desktop, okay. Folder View, List so guys, View, Comments, Stay Protected. 
quick overview of how we can use the convenient OCR feature in JAWS to read PDF files, as well as other type of image files, including JPEGs that contain scanned images of text. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks very much for that presentation there, JP. Um, yeah, the OCR function certainly is, um, you know, a great addition to JAWS. Um, just a quick question, um, uh, JP. Um, will JAWS Will JAWS always detect if a PDF contains a scanned image of text and ask you if you want to perform the OCR as it did there in the video? Yeah, so Daniel, this, 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 this would be a relatively new feature of JAWS. Uh, so the answer is not always. Um, there was an update to JAWS in what would have been March last, sorry, March 2018. That meant if you open uh, an inaccessible PDF, so the PDF containing the scanned image, um, then it, it will display a message, a dialogue there, as you saw in the video, asking if you want to perform OCR on that document. So it's really, really straightforward there. You can just press enter or space, as I said, and the OCR happens straight away. Now, if you open up uh, a PDF like I did in the video with JAWS, and it doesn't read it out, it'll just say image, and it's, in, it's inaccessible. There is a way around that, I'd say, in the demo, what I did was I went to File Explorer, and right. then I found the PDF that needed to be OCR'd. Uh, then you use your layer command, insert space, and then um, O, and then F, and the uh, document will uh, be, well, you have the OCR performed on the, on the document. Uh, so there is a way around it. So it doesn't happen all the time, but there is a way, a way around it at least. Yeah. yeah. So there, there just always going to be a workable solution there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said the alternative is you can, depending on what, uh, the, whether you have the application key on your keyboard or not, if you can press the application key, arrow down to perform uh, OC, convenient OCR, as it's called, and uh, you can select it that way, or you can press Shift F10, and you can arrow down to, to the context menu to perform the OCR that way as well. But yeah, as you say, there is there is like a, a, a workaround if, if you don't get prompted with that message. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for that, hey. JP. Um, look, we might bring back, bring in um, Brian and Joe and Sean again. Um, we're just getting a couple of questions here on the Q and A panel. I know they have been there for a little while, so I'd like to reach in these first. Um, the first one that we've we got in earlier. Can can one of the guys explain uh, Jaws cursors? A quick explanation, please, if they could. Well, it's called the Jaws. Uh, the the you, Initially, you had two courses. You had the JAWS cursor and the PC cursor. Okay, well, essentially, the um, the JAWS menu allowed you read or get access to parts of the screen that you weren't right, that the PC cursor wouldn't easily give you access to. So, for example, you couldn't get access to the ruler. You couldn't get access to the various menu buttons such as bold, uh, print, etc. Was active by activating the JAWS cursor, which is the minus key on the numeric keypad, and pressing the up and down arrow keys. You could get access to those parts of the screen that the regular PC cursor wouldn't give you access to. Mm. Um, can you hear me, Daniel? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. And I mean, you could also route the courses to each other. So, for example, if you knew that there was something in the PC cursor that the JAWS, that you wanted the JAWS cursor to read, you could just do your insert key and press the minus key on your numeric keypad, and that brought the JAWS, JAWS cursor to where the PC cursor was, vice versa. If you read something on the JAWS car in the JAWS part of the screen that you wanted the PC cursor to go to, you could just hit the insert button and the PC button and that would bring you up to where the JAWS cursor was active at that given time. Mm. And then you could press spacebar to activate a button, etc. Um, again, I mean, and then you had a third, uh, the cursor, which was the old virtual cursor, when you were reading kind of documents on websites, etc. Whereas now, I mean, JAWS will automatically see most websites as virtual yeah. documents anyway, and just read them automatically. Very good. Okay. Um, thanks for that explanation, Brian. And um, maybe the next question we have here, um, I think it comes to get, getting an update for JAWS around version 18. Do you want to get up to JAWS uh, 20? So how do you go about that? And also there is a question about um, multiple multiple computers and single purchases as well. So maybe somebody could uh, explain a little bit about the JAWS um, situation. Yeah, uh, if anyone needs any quotes or prices of JAWS, they can contact uh, labs uh, at any time by email or the phone number. Uh, in terms of cost of updates, it depends what version you're updating from and to. 
and uh, JAWS can be expensive and that, but as Brian and Joe were saying there, it is the preferred screen reader. So we do try and you know, supply and support it, but we do also support NVDA also for people who can't, can't afford to go to JAWS. So as trainers, we always keep our options open and want to give people what they want to use. Okay. And uh, sometimes there can be more value in getting an SMA, a software maintenance agreement, so uh, you can get the next three versions of JAWS. So if you get a, if you buy um, 20, um, you'll get, uh, I, I suppose there's a discount price on 21 and 2 also. So they'll be included in your price for the SMA. Um, and uh, as you, you, part of your question said, uh, Manny, can you put it on? Um, as far as I'm aware, you're allowed to put on three machines, you know, so but you're, you, that's, that's what you get three keys. And um, if you have an SMA as well, a good trick or a good hint would be if you go, to, if you alt tab into your JAWS window, or press the JAWS key and the letter J to bring you to your JAWS key. If you do control JAWS key and the letter V, you'll get a lot of information about the JAWS version you have, but it will also include information as to whether you have any SMA upgrades, if you are entitled to any SMA upgrades. So that would be a good start as well. Very good, very good. Uh, just, a, just a general question there for, for both maybe Brian and, and uh, Joe. Obviously, you're, you're both uh, JAWS users primarily, but... Oh, it's, uh... <laughs> Just wondering there, guys, um, is there, would there be value in having NVDA installed, say, on a machine? And does, would you find situations where perhaps a, a browser, if, if you're if you're maybe on, browsing the web or using an application where maybe for whatever reason NVDA just works a bit better? So could, is there value of so you having JAWS as your primary screen reader, yeah. but also yeah, having I'll, access to NVDA occasionally? I'll take that one there, JP. The, the only... Um, Advantage I, I see at the moment, maybe Brian covered a different one, but is NVDA works with Team Viewer um, yeah. at the moment, and um, uh, where Jaws, Jaws uh, as far as I'm aware, Jaws didn't up to last year anyway work great with Team Viewer. But that's my understanding as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jaws has its uh, its own system where they can remotely log in with Tandem, so it's a different. Exactly. exactly and yeah. yeah, but but that's the only I suppose area I could see um, mm. at the moment. Yeah. There was an issue. There was an issue with older versions of JAWS as well with uh, the Firefox browser where um, Firefox or JAWS wasn't uh, reading the, um, the, wasn't browsing the web that easily or reading websites that easily with Firefox. And in that scenario, I was advising people to maybe load NVDA and to go over to uh, Firefox, load NVDA yeah. and JAWS yeah. would work away perfectly. So for example, if you're trying to load YouTube videos in an older version of Internet Explorer, jo um, th there was an issue. So therefore, mm. we, we were loading people, telling, advising people to go to Firefox for YouTube, load NVDA, which would work away perfectly with the older version of Firefox, and it would work away perfectly for you. Mm. And I suppose, obviously, NVDA doesn't take up as much processor speed because it's not as powerful a program as, as JAWS. JAWS has more built-in um, features. You know, so there, look, if you had, I suppose, a really old computer that you still wanted to use for some reason, possibly ND NVDA would work better than a newer version of JAWS, you know. But that's that's a, a small, I suppose, reason to to um, advise it, but uh, I, I don't generally advise it as your main screen reader anyway. Yeah, yeah, you'd take the JAWS usually, yeah. If, 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 you, can, if you can afford it, or as I say, sometimes, the the grants are out there and stuff like that to get jaws but i mean in in a work environment definitely i'd recommend jaws i, su I suppose, I suppose it depends advantage. on your on what you're going to do with the screen reader though yeah mm. i suppose Start an off. advantage to nvda as well is, is that it loads really really quickly on most systems so if you're troubleshooting a computer for example it's handy to have uh, nvda on the memory stick pressing the end memory stick load nvda and work away to troubleshoot the system and mm -hmm. you know then just close everything down again whereas i mean if you're a steady user of jaws then there is definitely more functionality in jaws than there would be in nvda because i suppose if you're using nvda and you're sending emails and web browsing you know it does work quite well but then jaws has all those extra ocr features that are very like are very very useful that nvda they don't have them or you'd have to download add-ons and different things to make something similar work so you don't have to convince you to do it. The NVDA OCR. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, nice. 
I see there's a question there that no, it, the question doesn't quite make full full sense. It's a question about um, is there a shortcut to access a list of other Microsoft programs in in Excel and does JAWS give the most feedback, etc. So it, it's it's not exact. The question isn't fully clear. So if that person would like to maybe even email Labs the question, we can contact them after the show. Do possibly you mean which program gives the most feedback? Is it? I'm not, I'm not yeah. entirely sure, Joe. Well, yeah, I suppose as, as, as more, if, if it is that question, I, I personally think JAWS gives you a little bit more feedback, you know, and the JAWS has uh, had a few more keystrokes built in. And obviously, the, re um, the reason the um, command search was built in was for that reason also. But um, as I said, if they if they do come back in, we yeah. If they, if they, want, if they want to clarify the question in um in, in an email to us, we will definitely give them a call or an email back and get to the bottom of that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so uh, I think that is the end of our questions uh, for today. Uh, thanks very very much for the for the guys JP, Sean, Brian, and Joe for. Uh, joining in there and that brings us pretty much to the end of today's um, live event but don't forget uh, if you need to get in uh, contact with NCBI services you can give us a phone call the number is 1850-334353 or you can email info at ncbi.ie and if next week we are on our live event, which will be back on the normal day of Tuesday. We will be taking a look at Windows 10 accessibility with Maureen and myself, Daniel Dunn, will then give a presentation on the new Microsoft Edge Chromium browser. So that will be an interesting look there. And don't forget, if you need any techn technology support, uh, our lines are open Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can call us nationwide on 1850 92 30 60 or 01 531 And you can also email labs at ncbi.ie with your support request. And if you would like to donate to NCBI, our new donation website is now up and running. It's at donate.ncbi.ie. And if you would like to sponsor one of our live events, also get in touch with labs at ncbi.ie. So thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.